It's hard to believe, but yesterday, July 19th, marked five years, <laughs> and I know it's hard to believe it's been five years, but it has been, five years since the Archie Sonic run came to an end. And you know what's funny is a lot of people look at all the different factors that were thrown into uh, were basically thrown into the reasoning why the cancellation happened. One of the, you know, key key reasonings they believed it happened was thanks to Ken Penders. Yeah, Ken has to take some of the blame, if not a lot of the blame. I mean, him going out and and suing, and some would say rightfully so, suing Sega for royalties and. Well, not just Sega, but Archie as well, for royalties. You know, because he wasn't getting paid for his characters being used, you know, in the comic while he was no longer the head writer. As I mentioned, some would say he was in the right. But lately, over these past several years, these past five years actually, a lot more information has come out. And it seems that maybe, as many people have brought up, Ken may have not been telling the entire truth. I mean, true, Archie kind of brought it upon themselves when, you know, they didn't produce a legitimate physical copy of the agreement, and instead it was a photocopy, which basically Ken argued, said, oh, that could have been uh, plagiarized and everything and forged and all that, and... You know, he has a right to his opinion because, hey, it's a photocopy, it's not the physical copy. So yeah, Archie brought it upon themselves, but here's the thing, though. Ken, like I said, he does take does need to take a lot of the blame. I mean, if he didn't do what he did, and this is a fact, in my opinion, I think the comic would still be going today. No doubt. I think the comic would still be going today as we speak. But because he did what he did, that's what led us into basically the reboot. The soft reboot, soft retcon, reboot, retcon, however you want to view it. That's what led us into it. And not only did it lead us into it, but you know, it took us in a direction that felt more game related more, you know, game-like, and it even re redesigned some of the characters to feel like they fit in the game themselves. Characters like Sally, characters like Bunny, Dulcie, Loop, you know, Rotor, even to an extent Antoine and Nicole. You know, they all got redesigned to feel like they would fit right into a Sonic game. And in the process, what did they do? What did they do in the process of making this happen? They took any resemblance of what Ken had done and threw it out the window, all because of his lawsuit. All because of his lawsuit. Now, when it comes to the reboot and the retcon, I will give credit where it's due. I thought they did a decent job in what they were handed with, or what they were basically... I guess you could say scrambling to come up with, you know, I got to give it to them. You know, they did a decent job in giving us what we got. They took one of the more underrated uh, Sonic games at that time, Sonic Unleashed, and they decided to use that as the foundation to help, you know, introduce or reintroduce this new um, version of the world. So I gotta give them a lot of credit on that. I gotta give them a, a lot of credit for coming up with what they did almost at the last minute. And what's even intriguing is I loved the idea that basically from issues 52 to 56, you know, I loved the idea that, you know, they allowed the Freedom Fighters to regain the memories. 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, you know, the, throughout that five-parter, if you will, 
it allowed the freedom fighters to regain the memories. I mean, first Tails, then Antoine, then Rotor, then Bunny, then Amy and Sally. You know, I love the idea that they, even though I called it back at that time, they used Nicole to be the do ex machina, the key to restoring the memories. I like the fact that they at least tried to have that connection to the old continuity so that the older fans, like myself, would not be totally, I guess you can say, um, shelved. You know, we wouldn't be totally uh, ignored, you know, because of them going in this different direction. So I can appreciate them doing that, and like I said, all within the span of almost like the last minute when they came up with the story. I mean, I mean, here's the thing, even as they were progressing, trying to get back on their feet, they gave us some interesting stories um, as well on the side with Sonic Universe. I mean, they gave us Nicole's Spark of Life story, which I think is one of the best stories out there. They did the origin side stories uh, in some of the digest books and magazines and even as backup stories. So, you know, I appreciated all that. I really appreciated all that. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Because apparently some people say that sales were going down. And I don't think sales were going down. I really don't. I think sales were probably at their highest peak, if you want my opinion. I think what it was is that they were still dealing with Ken. They were still dealing with this, you know, with this lawsuit that he was bringing upon them, or he had brought upon them, that he had brought upon Sega. And and Sega didn't want to deal with it anymore. You know, they didn't want to deal with it anymore. Like I said, Sega didn't want to deal with it anymore. So what did they do? They, in my opinion, contacted Archie, said, hey, we're going to unfortunately have to end this partnership after almost 25 years. Because, you know, not because of sales, in my opinion, as people are looking, saying, but because of what happened with Ken Penders. Which, again, leads to the fact that he does need to take most of the blame. Now, here's the thing, as I've mentioned before, you know, in a lot of videos, could have Ian Flynn worked around this? He tried. He tried. But he couldn't, but he couldn't figure out, obviously, a way to do it. Should, should he have been made aware, excuse me, should he have been made aware of what was happening? Absolutely. You know, if you're the head writer of one of the best-selling comic books, you know, on the independent circuit, if you will. Like I said, you know, if you're the writer of an independent comic, or one of the highest best-selling independent comics out there, then... And in my opinion, you should be in the know. You, like I said, you should be in the know about what's happening. So, you know, Ian, you know, could he have worked around it? Yeah. Could he maybe let fans be aware of something happening? Yeah, he could have. But he didn't. And... That's just disappointing. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, I'll give him credit. You know, he... You know, he did what he could. You know, at the last minute. When they had to red redcon, reboot, soft redcon, soft reboot. Um, everything out there. Give him credit. The credit is due. But... You know, could he have let us know? Could he have let us know? Absolutely. He could have let us know. He could have given us some hints. Instead of just changing, you know, the covers to, you know, a certain issue or 
editing it to where the font was different. He could have let us know. He could have. But, you know, he didn't. He didn't let us know. So, yeah. I mean, look, I'll admit there was not much he could probably do, but like I said, if you're the head writer of one of the more successful comic books on the independent circuit, then you should be, you know, let in on what's happening. So you can inform the fans in some way. But yeah. Besides that, like I said, give them credit. They did what they had to do. They they worked with what they had, and um, they they turned out a decent product in the end. I'll give them that. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, I just wish it didn't have to deal. I, I I just wish honestly that you know it wouldn't have ended, because like I said, if Ken Pendis wouldn't have pulled what he did on both RG and Sega, then I think, honestly, the comic would still be going. And now when you look at it five years later, he's trying to pull the same crap on Paramount. And it's not going to work. And like I said earlier, now more information is coming out of the fact that he may have not told the truth. He may have not told the truth. And if this... I'll put it this way. If this has to do with two things, if this has to do with Locke being killed off, then maybe he shouldn't have, you know, maybe he should have left a note saying, hey, if you're going to use my characters, don't kill them off. Maybe he should have signed something. Or, or that, does it have something to do with, oh, I don't know, Mobius years later not being the true future to the co original continuity, like he wanted it to be. You know, because Ian Flynn said to change that. I don't know. Is it maybe he despises Ian because maybe, and I'll be honest with you, maybe Ian's done a better job because Ian, as a fan, understands what the fans want. I don't know. I don't really know. But yeah, I honestly think if he had not pulled what he did, I think the comic would still be going. I really do. But yeah, it's hard to believe it's been five years since the original Archie Sonic book ended. But the benefit, though, but the benefit, the silver lining, is you have fans continuing it with Archie Sonic Online, just like you have fans continuing Sonic Set AM with, the, you know, with the Team Season, getting this third season up and going officially from an animated standpoint. But what do you guys think? How do you feel about the fact that it's been five years since the book ended? And do you think if Ken had not pulled what he did, that the comic still be going today? And do you think maybe Ian Flynn could have at least been let in on the know of what was going on to at least give us fans an idea of what was happening? Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments as well as in the live chat during the premiere. Like the video, Super Chest Super Stickers will be open and appreciated in the live chat during the premiere. Super thanks afterwards. Also, you can check me out at BWR's discussions on favorite podcast locations except for Pandora. Also, check me out at Fenmo at Brian Warmer 2, Cash App at BWRoses98, Patreon at BWRoses. And like I said, all your favorite podcast locations except for Pandora. And check out the Teespring store as well. But let me know what your thoughts are, guys, and I will talk to you later.